it's uh, somebody asked a question earlier about restoring things. It's hard to sell grass. This, it's easy to sell trees and, 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 and animals, but to go out and tell people you're restoring grass, it's, uh, I mean, there are certain types of grasses maybe we can sell easier, but our kind of grass, is, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of patience. And, and, you know, we're dealing with things that can't vote. So it's up to us to save them. And we're part of a, 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 a community. It's not just a commodity we're dealing with. We talk about uh, soil, water, air, and, 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 other, and wildlife. We're dealing with a, a com- you're part of a community. And that earth out there is a community we all live in. Uh, I heard, a, I think, Morgan Freeman talking to a, uh, an old, a Native American chief. And he said, Morgan asked him about the resources. And the chief said, you know, when you talk about Mother Earth, it's not just a resource to be used and abused. It is the source of life. And think about it. You know, everything we grow goes back to everything that's produced, everything that lives is based on Mother Earth and protecting it. So <clears throat> I, I, I really believe in that. And I'm with the Wildlife Habitat Federation, and we've been in business for about 14 years now. And, uh, and that's what we do. We believe that everything we do is we're trying to remove constraints, like he was talking about today, the, the, the invasives. Um, nature abhors a void. If you don't put something out there, nature's going to put something out there, and you might not like what it puts out there, or what man put out there earlier is going to come back. So we've got to go, we've got to put something out there that's, that's better for restoring our, nat- our native, our natural resources. And um, so um, my, my first, when I talked to, to Carl, to your group down there, I think it was one of my first talks about this. And uh, my practice was fail fast, fix fast. Carl remembers that. And, you know, I wish I'd had me around then what I know today because we've made a lot of mistakes, but we've learned a lot over the last 14 years. And that's what I want to share with you today is tell you some of those the little, little uh, nuances of things we learn about, I got to, about uh, uh, how we put it in the ground. And, of course, this is a big implement. We, we work on, uh, we've, we've affected, impacted probably 30,000 acres now. We started with 200, and we built that first little corridor seven miles long from my ranch all the way to, to Atwater up at, at Cat Spring. And that, was our, that, that sort of gave us an impetus to go forward. So we started with that first little seven acres and, and, a, and a bar drill and no tractor. We had to borrow the tractor too. And now this is a rig. That's a, that's a 14-foot no-till drill. Uh, and we're working on another 20,000 acres, or not totally 20,000, but we're impacting ranches that are, that are equal to 20,000 acres today. So we're trying to put it on the ground. And, and as Jason Harden, my friend, used to say, he said, conservation stops when the wheels start, stop rolling. You, gotta, you can't talk about it. So, and, and maybe you, you think, well, my part's not that much. It doesn't have to be. Every little bit counts. And thank you for doing what you do. This is, we're working on big acreage here. I, I counted the wheels on my, that we have under the shed on our place. We've got 66 wheels of implements and tractors. And we want to share that with you. So if you're trying to put something, Glenn, you need a cultifier, you need to do this, or you need a no-till drill, we've got three no-till drills. Um, so we want to share. We, we charge you what it costs us. It's a, no, it's a, it's a non-profit. You know, and that, that drill costs $3,000 per foot. So we don't just give it away. We just don't do it for nothing. We have to. But we, char- we charge you what it costs us. And you don't want to buy it. Um, we're not only doing that, but we're... Uh, but some of the stuff I'm going to tell you about today I learned, not with just the big stuff, but the little small pocket prayers. Jaime is responsible for getting me with, involved in that. We started doing M.D. Anderson, and we planted, uh, you know, five acres there ultimately down in the medical center. And boy, that was a, man, that's, you talk, everything we do is research. And everything I do is research. And getting to, from Cat Spring to M.D. Anderson with a little tractor and trailer and an implement, through that kind of traffic was a real, that's a lot of research, searching a way to get there, you know. But we learned a lot in the process, and the pocket prairie idea has taken on, and we're, here's two more we're doing uh, with, with, with our friends, you know. The one at, uh, 
at the Katie High Schools and depicted on the left, one down at Pearland and depicted on the right. So we're, we don't use the big stuff, we'll use the little tractors. And it's, it's still the same type of, 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 of program where you have to, you got to get a clean seed bed or as clean as you can before you, and I don't mean uh, without any vegetation, because we plant with native dr uh, no-till drills. So we, uh, but we get it to a point where you are, you get ahead of the curve. And I think our job is to put out something that dominates what's going to come up. That seed bank out there is, it's got all kinds of seed that's going to come up. You just, what you want to do is get something in ahead of what nature's going to put out there if you don't. Uh, the basics are still the same. You know, Aldo Leopold talked about the hoof, the match, the, light, the hoof, the, the match, the plow, the axe, and the gun. Those being hoof, being prescribed grazing, prescribed burning, uh, plowing fire lanes, and you know, putting out bugging and, and brood sites. The axe being removing woody cover, and of course, the gun is responsible hunting and fishing and whatever. But added to those, we've added uh, you know, some right kind of seeds. Uh, we've tried all kinds of seeds, and I'll get into that in a moment, and, um, and herbicides, you know, but you, doing, using the herbicides, less and less of that is possible, but you, you know, water is a chemical. Everything is, you know, so many things are chemicals, but just being responsible in how you use and what you use. Me, the first thing I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is something you, you just don't use this in, much in in urban settings, but it's a very effective tool, and that's prescribed burns. Now, I started doing this in a in a checkerboard fashion. Uh, you can see the guy. This is a this field is cut up in uh, lots of fire lanes. So you can see all the fire lanes in that field. It's green because I planted it in wheat or oats in between where we plowed. And and you start and this and you start and this is a I think it's pretty cool watching this one of those plots being burned. And when you do the, all, all these checkerboards, it creates more edge. Uh, wildlife likes edge. A black bass in the water likes an edge. A deer likes an edge. A quail likes an edge. The quail will, will, will after this is burned, they will they'll come back in native grasses, and they'll build their nest in there. And, and the edge out there will come up in forbs. So the little quail will run out of, will run out of, the, out of the nest into the nearby Forbes to do their bugging, and this is this is 19 days later, and and you can see smoke smoke in the, in, in the distance. We're burning more, and uh, this happened to be out in front of my house, but we did the same on like several other fields. That's 19 days later. That's after the, the oats came up. Sorry, and this is what we plant in the edge. We harvest our own seed. This is some of the gallardia we we harvested locally. And, and planted that. And you know, it's like, a, for baby quail, it's like a, it's like a mall. They go out in this, these flowers, and they got this canopy above them, and they're out there running all through those flowers, chasing bugs. And, and the big quail too, but I'm just saying it, it so, the, so the mama quail, she laid, her, she laid her nest, is it got a point or no? She laid her nest in the tall grass, and the babies run out into these flowers, and woolly croton, or whatever else has, has come up in these plowed areas and, and chase bugs because that, that's all they have. That's all they eat the first few months of their lives is, is insects. There's no seeds out there for, well, to amount to much. So they go in that mall and they're like teenagers you know, hanging out in the mall. Cover crops. I, I, cover crops have become a prerequisite for me for planting native grass. Um, and, the reason for it, and this is a good picture of uh, oats. I like to use any of the cereal grains, uh, wheat, rye, barley, oats, um, because they, they come up so well and quickly. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of research on how to produce cereal grains in the United States. Not much, much on some of the other crops, but that's a, just look at the, how it covers that. It just takes over that land. It's like a herbicide. It's going to, it's going to shade out the invasives that are going to try to come up. So, I just think the world of cereal crops. Now, uh, others, there's a oats on the left. And see, look at, it's got, that's just soon after, you know, emerging. And look at the, uh, the humus it produces. 
it's uh, it sequesters so much so much carbon too by by you know so quickly, and the middle picture, earthworm casings. You know that shading that shading that area, those earthworms and the microbes in that soil are protected, especially during the harsh summer periods when there's so much sun hitting the ground, bare ground. You want something to cover it, and and there's a little plant coming up and uh, uh, a dicotyledon of some type. It's coming up in that in that thatch that the oats, when they fell down and, and created humus, and that humus is uh, earthworm food, remember, when, when it goes down and decomposes, and it's providing that humus for that young plant to come up. So I, like, I think hermit, uh, cover crops, don't try to rush it. I, I, you know, I'm impatient, if you're, but if, you, if you're not patient, you know, go to Walmart or, or McDonald's, but don't go try to grow native grass. <clears throat> uh, and here's the, here's the new idea on cover crops. Go with go with these tubers, that's uh, turnips and radishes. The idea here is they break open the soil up, in the, especially the black soil. You know, like you, some of the stuff you got here, you got to open it up where they can get some some water in the ground, or or it just it gets so compacted after like cattle are running on it. So cover crops, and you know, I like to eat radishes and turnips anyway. So it's you know plant that in with your cereal crops, with your oats and your wheat or whatever, be a combination. But my gosh, it prepares the soil so well for your native grass when you plant it. You have more success. Now, sometimes you have to spray if you plant a cover crop a little bit because what you're going to be doing, you're going to be planting in the stubble. You're going to be planting in the stubble of, what, of that cover crop. So this is, this is oats and that stuff I just showed you that's been herbicided, and now it's standing up. And we're pulling a no-till drill through it. And you can do that in a small plot. I just happen to have a picture of the big plot here. Uh, the next item I'll mention uh, is um, what seed to use. Seed are cheap. When you consider all the stuff you got to do, buying seed, I mean, it's not, it's, it, that's the cheapest part of your operation. Everybody, oh, I can't pay that much for seed. Let me tell you, all that other preparation costs a lot more than the seed. So make sure you you get the right seed. You know, don't, uh, don't skimp on the seed. And, and people say, well, you can use native uh, local ecotypes. And the next one said, oh, no, use commercial. It has stronger germplasm. The answer is yes, use both. Just find the right proportion and the right people who can supply you with PLS. Remember somebody said, what is PLS? Pure live seed. Don't buy on the basis of a total weight by PLS basis, pure live seed basis, because you get you can buy a lot of seed and not have P high PLS, and you don't have really good seed. So what do we do? A combination. And I, we have to have local ecotypes. That's why we bought this harvester. This was made up in Billings, Montana. We have our own source of native grass seed. I buy some native grass seed from other companies. But you've got to have that native, local, eco, locally grown ecotypes in the mix, okay? And a high, going up to 50% is not beyond reason. Of putting that much in your seed mix. Um, I don't know what we used at Katy Prairie, but it was pretty high, pretty high local ecotypes. Or you used, we planted for you. Um, and and uh, <clears throat> so so anyway, put put uh, use the local ecotypes. But I believe again in using commercial seed with it. And why? Because if you don't have commercial seed out there, the local ecotypes are low succession, and they're not going to come up the first year, most of them. They're going to come up the second, third. So I've had some come five years later, up five years later, and people think they're gone. They're not coming up. Some of the stuff takes a long time. It, native grass seed has its own mind of its own, and it's going, when, it's going to come up when everything's just like it wants it to be. So. This is a nurse crop. This is some. This is commercial seed I bought. This is uh, we bought and planted. That's a green sprinkle top. It's a great nurse crop. It's not going to last. It's going to die. It's going to last a couple of years at the most, and it's going to die. And then, and then you, uh, then you, uh, but you cover the ground while the natives are coming on. You give that. You give. You you, you keep nature from bringing back something you don't want. So you want to dominate it with what you want to dominate it with and what used to be here. And this is something that restored two years ago because it went through the 
summer cover crop, winter cover crop, planted it, and it took it, and it's amazing, you know, it's high, much better coverage of native grass we got by going through that process of putting out the cover crops. I mean, it's just, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, that, that patch right there, everything. So, um, I'm gonna finish up by telling you that we we're, we're, we have no uh, that we, that's why we created the Prairie Seed Council. We have no 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 um, uh, no facility in this neck of the woods for growing out our own seeds. So thankfully, like they're doing here, South Texas natives and Kirk will talk to you all momentarily about that. And but growing, you know, we planted on our place uh, some of the seed that was. Some of you people have collected. I've collected it. We went down to Kingsville to the plant material center down there, and I finally figured out that, you know, I'm going to be gone and dead before that stuff is getting, gets developed. Not to say they did a wonderful job because we're using some of the seed in, that they've developed down there, but we decided to expedite the process, and so we're growing some of that seed out. That's 32 different plots of little blue stem and 32 different plots of uh, of um, not root, not root bristle grass, growing alongside one another, and it's coming on, folks. That's I forgot how long later I forgot to look, and uh, that's even later. Look at that stuff. It just and and it's wonderful. Every six feet is a different seed group. I mean, different collection from all the way from Kingsville or Victoria, I think it was, all the way to Louisiana coast uh, border, and so. Um, but as you walk through there, it's just amazing how much difference there is in this collection. It's one co different collections, or 32 collections that you'll see. So they're going to select that, and I'm not going to get into their program, but I'm just tickled to death with what's, what, what they're doing. We finally got some seed we're going to have here that we can grow out here on, on, our, on our place or for you people to use, or for me to use, because I want my own source. Yes, sir? Is that sandy soil? It is sandy. Yeah. It, it is sandy, so um, and it's irrigated, and that's something we don't. And so that's why you see it. But some of those we dug up some of those some plants, not these, but some others we grew in that area, and the roots uh, are ten feet long in one year. They go down, and it's amazing what kind of root structure these people get, these plants. And we cheated a little bit. We planted these in, in these cylinders, and and put them down, and then we pulled them out with a backhoe and we dug them took the soil off of it. But it's amazing how much root systems on these on these plants. But these are going to be the basis for seed that we're going to be using of little blue stem, not root, bristle grass that we will grow out in this area for the Gulf Coast. So it's good to know that we have our own seed and to grow out down here. There is that's what happens when you do this. Okay. Yeah, question. Yeah. And and by the way, my you can call me um or you, you go on our web page is whf-texas.org, whf-texas.org and our biologist Gary Stevens is his numbers on there. He's wonderful. He can come out and give you a plan. I wish I'd had a plan when I started because I made so many errors. So many. I, I I don't talk about all that, but anyway, Gary can come out and look at it. I can look at it, and we get you a plan. You'll you'll save money by having a plan this month, this month, this month. What to do? Not just you know throw dice at the and hope you hit it right. And so call us, go on the web page, and, and Gary's number's there. Uh, brochure back there. You can take that brochure, and I think there's uh, phone numbers on it. Uh, Contact us by email. Emails on there, and uh, hey, we're we're a community, folks. You know, we got to do it. We got to keep the ball rolling. You got to make things happen. You know, I remember Abe Lincoln saying, "The world will little note, no longer remember what we did here, but we'll always remember what we said here." I mean, what we not what we said here, but what we did here. We got to do it. We got to put it on the ground. So that we can, if we can help y'all do that, give us a holler. Okay.